Well, it's wonderful to be here. Uh, thanks so much for coming. Um, a couple of years ago, Daniel Pinchbeck and I spoke together at the Enthian camp at uh, the Burning Man. Is this mic working? Yes. Got to get in tight. No problem. Ooh, sounds like the voice of the voice of God. Uh, this is Burning Man Entheon Camp, and uh, you know, if it, how many of you have been to Burning Man? Probably a number of you. Few. Okay. Look, if you've not been to Burning Man, you need to go at least once in your life. Uh, it is something else. Uh, you won't. You, you may be miserable the whole seven days, but you'll never forget the experience. It's an amazing thing. And Daniel and I both spoke, and uh, what, what I immediately understood about Daniel was that he was an intellectual activist, which is to say that he had lots of ideas, but he did things. Um, the whole course of, of uh, the human evolution has been the doing of things. Thoughts are great, and there's a lot of them around, and ideas are wonderful, and everybody has an opinion and an elbow, but ultimately it is the doing of things that makes all the difference. He does that. At Reality Sandwich is the example, and now I see that, and I've just learned about this, that now this, this group is uh, evolving around the world. This is very significant. So I want my hats off to you and, and to Daniel. Uh, I, this is going to grow. Um, uh, I should mention that uh, I'm hoping to relocate here to Los Angeles if I do. I will certainly join Evolver uh, and be a regular. You can count on that. Uh, for the last seven years, uh, I have been put up in different cities. This goes back to 2003 by supporters who have provided me a studio office to work from. Uh, this is required. There, there's simply not funding for this work yet in, in significant amounts. Uh, and this includes the San Francisco area. East Bay includes Gaithersburg, Maryland, McLean, Virginia. And I'm searching now and seeking someone to donate an office uh, studio uh, to work in LA on this issue. Because I think I need to be here because there is an evolving movement, uh, both in uh, what we'll call the consciousness movement, but also in uh, new media, alternative media. LA is changing, and ultimately I think it will be an even more powerful force with aggressive movement than San Francisco, which isn't gonna go away. So I think I need to be here. So if that works out, uh, hopefully I'll be joining you all in the near future. Now, before I get into this relatively brief presentation, I do three, four hours on this stuff, not tonight. 40 minute slides, hopefully. There's two uh, things I wanna preface and leave with you, uh, or give you uh, as background as we get into this. The first, uh, in a, I know this came to me while I was listening to the earlier presentations. Um, we don't know much about what happened before the cataclysm of approximately 10 to 12,000 years ago. Uh, uh, some people are trying to find out. I wish them luck. But since then, we know a great deal. And one of the things we know about the last 10 to 12,000 years is there have been a, a substantial, a, a very broad uh, uh, traditions of messianism uh, throughout multiple cultures. Uh, messianism. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. If I'm not, somebody correct me. Messianism. Yes, messianism. The, the concept of a messiah. Uh, a powerful entity that will come and dramatically change the world. We have obviously an example right here in this, in this, uh, these plate glass windows of one of those individuals or entities. Um, and one could say a lot about all of that, but I think one thing I want to raise is this, that one of the things that's m most common to all of this messianic traditions and all the cultures is that, with few exceptions, they represent a, a powerful yearning on the part of people, basic people. Not powerful rulers, but basic people. What we now call the man and woman of the street. There's all kinds of common, whatever you want to call it. You know, mothers and fathers of children, the workers and the whatever. A basic yearning for the human race to make the transition and separate from the violent animal. All of you have watched, I'm sure, cable television, and all of you have had that moment when you're watching the animal planet and you're seeing a, a predator run down a prey and eat it 
and you're going, ooh, you know, I don't want to see that just before dinner. The, the world is violent, and the evolution of animals is essentially a violent process. So far, so good. It worked pretty well for a very long time until we came along. And we are a little different because of two very important reasons. This and these. All right? This and these. Why? Best way I can put it is this way. I don't care whether it's a thousand years or a million years from now or 10 million years from now. Uh, the crustaceans, particularly the porpoise, which have incredible brains, probably fully conscious and sentient, are never going to build a nuclear bomb because they don't have these, all right? But we do. And when that happened, when we created, when this evolved, particularly in the frontal lobes, and, and, and of course we still have these, we went from just being a, another violent animal that could cause some problems to being essentially an actual threat to the entire system. This is an interesting thing. And so this, this process from the thousands of years of our violent nature as it worked its way out in endless wars upon wars upon wars in every society, virtually every culture, bloodshed upon bloodshed, the human race in general said, oh, we don't want that. We want somehow to move past that, to evolve. We are not, there's no law of the universe that says we have to remain the violent animal. We have moved to another place we can be something else. And all of these messiahs were going to come and bring what? Peace. A world without war and what have you. That's something to remember, right? And I'll get back to that in a second. The other thing that I want to, to leave you with is this, that for the last 60 years, there has clearly been a powerful sense among multiple cultures that something very profound is going to happen very soon. Now this, is, this has happened before. There's always been a little of that in almost any culture, right? Isolated here, isolated there. But this is almost a global in nature. Each decade that's passed, this growing sense that something big is coming has spread. We see it manifest in countless ways as people try to address this somehow, respond to it somehow. They feel something here. Maybe here, maybe in the back here, something is going on, right? And so we have people that are talking to entities. They are channeling beings from other dimensions, from other planets, angelic beings, spiritual beings with important messages about what is going to happen. We have people that are very powerfully into the concept of the end of the world, catastrophism, which has always been around, but it's increasingly manifest. We really had a good run at that on the two, y, Y2K thing. Things got very elaborate there. We have religions building up around this. We have, of course, an entire 2012 uh, concept emerging, quite elaborate, quite sophisticated, don't know where it's going. All of this is fundamentally manifest of the fact that in some sense, every one of us feels, I think, something big is about to happen. Well, I think that is the case. I cannot speak to these other things. I don't know what's going to happen in 2012. I, I, I have no entities talking to me whatsoever. I, I, I just get email. That's it. That's all I get. Occasional message on the phone. Nothing profound. No electronic messages. I don't, I just, my number is not in that book. You know, I, I got the unlisted you know, listing there. In the Akashic plane, I'm not listed. But it, there is something about to happen which may fill the bill. And I'll make the case that it is this issue that has fundamentally been driving this sense of profound transition. Now, this is a hubris, and I, I apologize in advance. But to put it a simple way, since 1947, ETs became profoundly manifest. They go back a long ways, but they started you know, really turning up. It's one thing to cruise on through once in a while, you know, make a few slaves, mine a little gold, then go away. It's another thing to start turning up all over the world during a time when the world has become complex and, and has communication systems and radio and soon to have television and all of that. You turn up then, that's a little different matter than showing up 300,000 years ago. And since that time, we have seen a, a, a outpouring of phenomena and events that clearly indicate that this is happening and yet there's no resolution of it. 
And so all of these sightings going on in virtually every country, every phenomenon associated with the UFO ET issue, as an unresolved matter, simply goes straight to, I guess you could say, the subconscious. Since the government won't acknowledge it, the, the universities won't teach it, and the media wouldn't cover it properly, we simply shove it into the unconscious. We can't resolve it, got to get on with life, got to get to work, got to pay the bills. And so down in the subconscious it goes. And you know, I think that a sort of subliminal sense that beings from somewhere else are visiting this planet is more than enough to start generating a very powerful feeling that that's got to go somewhere. That's leading somewhere. So this is, you know, my thought that I leave with you. And the other thing I'll say before I start is this. My working model, which I, I have to have, otherwise I'd go nuts, which I'm prepared to change at the drop of a hat, is fairly basic. And it is that when you see these ships coming and going, when you see animals that have had material taken from them, when you hear stories of individuals who are taken into craft, physical contact, into craft, for messages, for examinations, or whatever, you are seeing work being done. Important work is being done for reasons that we do not understand yet. A lot of work being done. Maybe even, in a, in a sense, a, 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 an attempt to get a lot of things done now, quickly. Right? But when you see crop circles, you see something else. I think what you see there, and I even include the dialogue going on between the ET circles and the human circles, because some of those human groups are pretty go good, and I'm impressed with what they do. And it takes a lot of work, and they don't get paid. And you wonder, is there a dialogue going on? But what you see in those circles, which have been slowly evolving in complexity and size and spreading, to me, it's, to me, obvious. It is a simple message. Very soon, we will be in open contact with you. So get ready for that. That's a big deal. And the issue that I have devoted my life to is my best candidate for this profound event, this thing that people see coming, that are trying to label and talk about and express in a thousand ways. And it is not complicated. It's not that esoteric. It is the formal acknowledgment of the world governments of this extraterrestrial presence. The fact that you know it is fine. Many of you do. But that's not enough. There are plenty of you here that want no more war. But war will still go on. And troops will be shipped out. There are a lot of things that you in your heart want. But that doesn't mean the government's going to give them to you. What governments do matter in, a, in countless ways. And so the formal acknowledgement of the ET presence means that the press will finally cover it. The Congress will engage it. The foundations will fund it. The universities will teach it. And all who have engaged it will become the center of attention for a very long time. And that will be a different world. The disclosure event with a capital D will, in my opinion, be the most profound event in human history. And in fact, formal contact, when it takes place, I don't think will quite measure up. It will be anticlimactic. It will be, well, it's about time. We've been waiting. We've been watching documentaries about you guys for like two solid years. I've seen 400 movies, read 57 books. It's, they've got whole news channels devoted to it. It's about time you showed up. But the disclosure event, the formal acknowledgement event, the ones that finally, the, the moment, which will take five minutes or less, that finally brings this into the consensus reality once and for all, with no possibility of returning and going back. That moment is the most profound event in human history. And you are going to get to see it happen.